pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you may speak into our hearts. Give us light and understanding, my God, that we may have ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart that is pliable in your hands to walk in obedience. May your grace be poured upon us that everyone here under the sound of my voice also those that are watching through the live stream will be immensely blessed in Jesus name and everyone said amen <clears throat> last week <clears throat> I started talking to you on a new series or teaching you on a new series entitled the blood so this is a series on the blood or the blood series and uh, <clears throat> this morning we want to go into a second aspect called the blood stronghold now, if you missed the first one, make sure you get a copy of that and listen to it. Because I'm telling you, church, listen to me. Majority of the church today does not understand the value and the importance of the blood. Importance of blood in establishing and maintaining a relationship with God. Blood is a very important instrument. Blood is a very important medium. Blood is necessary to establish and maintain a relationship with God. Say amen, somebody. Now, I talked at length about it last time, and uh, we are going to move into the second aspect of it. But let me say this. Jesus became our Passover lamb. And, uh, you know, we are in that season right now. With the Passover lamb in place, Satan has become eternally helpless. Glory to God. You must be happy about that and rejoice. Somebody say amen. amen. The Passover blood is in place. Therefore, the Satan has become eternally helpless. The blood has to be applied to all the wicked plans of the devil. If you want to annul, if you want to destroy the plans, the strategies, and the workings of the devil against your life and against your destiny, you need to apply the blood of Jesus. If the enemy is against you day and night, you should be against the enemy day and night with your armory. And your armory that God has given you is the blood of Jesus. Somebody shout the blood of Jesus. No, I didn't say whisper, I said shout the blood of Jesus. Jesus. Try it one more time. Every time you plead the blood of Jesus, you've turned a switch on in heaven. Something happens in the realm of the spirit. You may not know, you may not see it, you may not feel it, but something happens and the blood has a voice. Remember the Bible says, the blood of Abel is crying out unto me. The Lord said that. That means blood has a voice. Every time you plead the blood and the devil comes to attack you, the blood of Jesus will speak to the devil and say, pass over. I don't know if you're getting the import of this, right? I said, somebody said, pass over. Say, pass over. Now listen, when the angel of death presented itself, he did not know which home to go to. He was dispatched to go and kill every firstborn male in every house. He could not distinguish and discern which house to go and which house not to go. But as he went to each house, there was something that he saw on some of these houses. He saw the blood of a lamb applied to the lintels, right? And to the doorposts. And when he saw that, he heard a voice. You know what the voice said? Say it again. Say it again. One more time. So when you apply the blood of Jesus in faith, and the devil comes to attack you, the, 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 the blood says, pass over. Yeah. Come on, you need to understand and comprehend the power of the blood. By the blood of Jesus, every evil shall pass over you. Amen. Glory to God. The blood is our stronghold. Somebody say, the blood is my stronghold. Blood. Say it again, the blood is my stronghold. Blood. Now go to 1 Peter chapter 1, please. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 24 and 25. Because I want to show you that man and his ability is not our stronghold. But God is our stronghold. Okay? His blood is our stronghold. For all flesh is as grass. And all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth 
and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Can you see this? The flesh is as grass. All flesh is as grass. And the glory of man is the flower of the grass. The grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away. When we try to depend on our own strength or lean on the arm of flesh, we always fail. But now go to Zechariah chapter 9, please. Zechariah chapter 9, and let's look at verse 11. Zechariah is in the Old Testament. Amen. Don't look at it and try to locate it in the New. All right. As for thee also, by the blood of thy, of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today to do I declare that I will render double unto thee. Now watch this. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant. Somebody say, by the blood of thy covenant. Amen. Say it again, the, by the blood of thy covenant. And it says, by the blood of thy covenant, I've sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit where there is no water. Deliverance came to the prisoners by the blood of the covenant. Somebody shout amen. amen. Somebody today is coming out of their bondage by the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. If it is you, shout amen. amen. By the power of the covenant blood of Jesus, you're coming out. Somebody shout, I'm coming out. I'm coming out today. This is your day of deliverance based on the covenant of the blood. Somebody say amen. amen. And then he says in verse 12, turn you to the stronghold. God is saying, look at that, you know, turn to your stronghold, <clears throat> you prisoners of hope. <clears throat> Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. Hallelujah. He says, turn to your stronghold. What is our stronghold? The blood. Somebody shout the blood. Which blood? The blood of Jesus. Come on, say the blood of Jesus. He says, turn to your stronghold, the blood of Jesus, and this is a promise. Today, somebody shout today. today. Shout today. today. Shout today. today. Today I declare, says the Lord, I will render double unto thee. Hallelujah. Somebody is going to receive a double today. Before night today. I said before tonight today. Somebody's about to receive a double portion. Hallelujah. Based on what? By the blood of the covenant. My friend, our stronghold is the blood of Jesus against all corruption in the world. Don't try to lean on the arm of flesh. Flesh and the glory of man is like the grass and the flower that faded away. So every time we try to lean, every time we trust, try to trust in man's help, it can falter and fail. But the surest foundation and the most powerful stronghold we have is the blood of Jesus. The blood. Somebody shout the blood. The blood. Remember in 1 Samuel chapter 17, there was... A giant by the name of Goliath. He came down into the valley and he began to mock, heckle, and challenge the armies of the living God. Saul and his army went into hiding every time that guy appeared in the valley. Until one day, a young lad of about 16 or 17 years of age... In the natural, we would call him immature. He has not really tasted and seen all the different aspects of life. Appears on the scene and he hears this voice that is mocking the name of God or mocking the people of God and defying the armies of the living God. Now watch what, I've, what I'm saying. Who is the commander-in-chief of the armies of America? The president. He is the highest commander. 
Who is the commander in chief of the armies of Israel? God. You didn't know that? So every time the military is mocked at, who are they mocking at? The leader. So who is being mocked? Who is being heckled? Who is being challenged? God is being challenged. So this young lad, David, comes on the scene and he hears that. He says, how dare? How dare? Is there not a cause? Somebody has to take a stand for God is what he was saying. How can you guys sit quiet and say nothing when the name of God is being mocked at? And your God is being belittled by a guy who is a giant. I know we don't measure up to him. But you know what he said in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 26. If you're there, say amen. amen. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? He says, who is he that is defying what? God. Who is, the, who, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Everybody say, uncircumcised Philistine. Uncircumcised. Say it again. What was the focus on? The focus was on the covenant. Circumcision, circumcision spoke about the covenant. Say amen. amen. Circumcision speaks about what? The covenant. He said, how can this guy come against us? This guy does not have a covenant. He depends on his strength. All flesh is like grass. All the glory of man is like a flower that fadeth. Who is this guy? I know he's tall. I know he's powerful. But who does he think he, he is? Because he's uncircumcised. Do you know what? I have a covenant with the almighty God. Oh, wait a minute. But this covenant is sealed in blood. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. See the blood covenant. Is a very powerful covenant. Do you know. That once a covenant is established in blood. It's irrevocable. There is no way you can get out of it except by death. There is no way you can get out of a blood covenant except by death. So what was his faith in? His faith was in the God who made a covenant in blood. He said, my God can never back out. I have this confidence that God will back me up. I may be a young lad, never handle a sword, never handle a spear, never went to war. I don't know how to even battle with men. I know how to fight animals, but I don't know how to fight with men. Are you with me, church? I said, are you with me? You may face a challenge you've never had before in life, but don't forget the one that's backing you is God. Remember, you have a covenant with God sealed. In the most precious, sinless, spotless, blemishless blood of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You have a covenant. And you got to remind yourself of the covenant. When you're facing such situations, may I remind you, you need to take communion at home. You need to take communion. And say, when I have a blood covenant with God, Sealed in the blood of Jesus. How dare the devil trouble and harass me in this manner. Say amen somebody. Amen. How dare the enemy harass me in this manner. His confidence my friend. David's confidence was in the Lord. Don't fear your opposition. How large, how tall, how experienced, how knowledgeable. Because our confidence is not in us. Our ability or the arm of flesh. But it is in the Lord God Almighty. How do you know that God will back you? How do you know? Because of the blood. Somebody shout the blood. Shout the blood. Many of us in the church are not taking advantage of the blood covenant. 
Because we've, been, we've not been taught how to apply it. We've not been taught how to take advantage of the blood covenant that we have with God. We got to remind ourselves that I have a relationship that can never be broken. Not just in this life, but for eternity. Come on now, amen. amen. The blood of Jesus was spilt, but it was not offered in a tabernacle of Moses on the earth. It was carried to heaven and offered up on the mercy seat in heaven. Glory to God. So it is an eternal covenant. I don't know how many of you are understanding this morning. You need to understand we have a blood covenant with God. And your God will back you up. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Our confidence is in, all, in the all-powerful blood of the Lord Jesus' blood. You see, the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 9, For by strength shall no man prevail. By strength shall no man prevail. How will you prevail in your present situation? How will you be an overcomer? How will you be able to sustain yourself? How will you be able to live in victory? How will you have more than enough? How will you be able to feed others? How will you live a life of testimony where God is glorified and many are blessed through by the blood covenant? Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Somebody shout amen. God is with us and for us. We need to learn to take over, to take cover. We need to learn to take cover in the stronghold that the Lord has provided. What is our stronghold? Say it again, the blood of Jesus. Say it again, the blood of Jesus. Be careful, child of God, not to be lured out of the blood shield. The devil will always tempt you and lure you out from the covering of the blood shield. And it can happen like the prodigal son. He was enjoying life under the covering of his father. But he thought the covering was restricting his freedom. People don't like to go to church. Why? Because they're told don't do this. Don't live in sin. Don't have illicit relationships. Don't go there. Don't fellowship with people that will... Pull you away from God. Don't sin. So they feel like it's all restriction if I come to church. Somebody say amen if you understand. Especially the young people. Well the world is going this way. What is wrong in having whatever you're having? Let me ask you a question. How many of you, or how many genuine friendships can you maintain at one time? Real friendships. And have enough time to do everything else. Yet, today's generation wants to have thousands of friends on Facebook. They're not friends. And you want to expose pictures on social networks which are not even good to appreciate and you want to watch somebody's friend half naked and you think what is wrong with that everybody does it and the church says don't and you think it's a restriction I got to get out of this place talk to me somebody am I reading your book There is an old saying, which I think everyone should be reminded. A friend in need is a friend indeed. I don't think 99% of those on your Facebook are friends now. Talk to me, somebody. I'm not trying to get at and hit at that, but I'm saying be careful. The devil is smarter than you think he is. How old are you? The oldest man over here probably is about 80, 80 plus something. 
but the devil is over 6,000 years old. So I'm sure he's got gathered some good knowledge and information. And he spent time in heaven with God, so he's picked up a lot of other understanding that we don't even know and realize. Somebody say amen. amen. He's smart. So don't think you can outsmart the devil with your own intellect. You need God. You need the wisdom of God to outsmart the devil. So when God is putting restrictions, I was saying last night, I said, the commandments of God are not grievous. But the commandments of God have been given for our blessing. When God says no for something, it is because he knows the end from the beginning and he says, and he knows that if I step in this direction, it's going to destroy my destiny. So what happened? This young son, which is called the who we call the prodigal son, felt too much restriction. Because every time he came home at 11 o'clock, dad was standing at the door and saying, where did you go to, son? Dad, don't you know I'm 25? Are you still asking me where I've gone? Hello? I work. And my boss wants me to work. Really? Just because you raise your voice, are you thinking that your father is going to believe you? He's been in life before you have at that age. Talk to me, somebody. Say, son, as long as you live under my roof, you're not permitted to do this. He says, this is too much. I can't handle this. I got to get out of this house. So whatever belongs to me, give me and I'm going. What happened? The devil lured him out of the covering of the father. That is the strategy of the enemy. The enemy wants to lure you out from under the blood shield. And if he can lure you out of the blood shield, you become an easy target. And you become a pitiable person in this world. Never get outside the blood covering. Never get outside the blood covering. Always remain under the blood. Refuse to leave your stronghold. The blood is our rescue. Living outside the blood covering is extremely dangerous and risky. Every time you hear the arrows of the enemy, and feel the heat of his attack, declare, I take cover under the blood of Jesus. Come on, say that with me. I take cover. I take cover. Say it again. I take cover, like you mean it. I take cover, I take cover. Under, the I take cover. under the blood of Jesus. Say it again. I take cover under the blood of Jesus. Say it again. I take cover under the blood of Jesus. The blood is our stronghold. Somebody shout, the blood is my stronghold. The blood of Jesus is my stronghold. The blood of Jesus is my stronghold. The blood of Jesus is my stronghold. You know what that means? It's like a tower. You go into the stronghold and no matter what the enemy tries, he can't reach you. He cannot reach you. He cannot touch you. He cannot harm you. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Every time you have a negative thought, every time you have a dirty thought, every time you have a thought that is not acceptable to God, plead the blood and say, Lord, I cover and I plead and I cover my mind, my thoughts and my imaginations under the blood of Jesus. Because remember, the enemy has access to your thoughts. Because every one of you would have had the experience that you might be praying and you might be sincerely praying and suddenly, from nowhere, a bad or evil or lustful thought will come. Have you had that experience? Talk to me, somebody. Come on, am I the only guy? Some bad thought will come. Some evil thought or a bad word will spring automatically. And you wonder, Lord, what have I done? I mean, have I sinned? Where is this coming from? I've been sincerely worshiping you, praying, and I've been talking to you, and, this, and then you feel so condemned because how dirty am I? How awful this is? How did this happen? 
No, 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 no. You didn't do it. The devil has access to your thoughts. So what he does is he injects that thought to see if you will latch on to it. And if you latch on to it, you could be on your knees with the Bible in front and thinking all kinds of nonsense. I'm not joking. She injects the thought. Church, <clears throat> it says, don't partake of the elements unworthily. Many have done it and are asleep. That means they're dead. Many have done it to their own harm. Watch this. This is very important for you to understand. <clears throat> because if you don't subject the thoughts, the ungodly thoughts to the blood of Jesus, the enemy can take over you. And don't think it will take over only when you're in a bar. It can take over you even when you're in church and in your own prayer time. Listen to me. On the last night, Jesus was serving communion, which was when the communion was established as that this is the New Testament, right? Come on, talk to me. Is that right? Everybody partook of the bread and the wine. Until that time, all the 12 disciples were there. The moment Judas partook of it, he could not sit there. He went and did what he had to do. What happened? He gave in to the thoughts of the enemy. He was in the presence of Jesus. But he could not help. You and I desperately need the blood covering. We need the stronghold of the blood of Jesus. And when these thoughts are injected, we have to be careful to immediately nip them at the bud by saying, Lord, right now I call upon the blood of Jesus to cover and cleanse my mind, my thoughts, my imaginations. I make you the Lord over all these areas in Jesus' name. Now, say, I bind those thoughts and bring them under subjection to my Lord Jesus right now. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So it's not strange... That while you're in the presence of God, you can still have evil thoughts. That's what happened with Judas Iscariot. Are you able to understand what I'm saying? Now, so the blood of Jesus is our stronghold. Now, I want to take you to the aspect of the purging quality of the blood. The blood purges. Now, I'm going to just start and finish today because we've run out of time. Before we look at the purging quality of the blood of Jesus, I want us to look at the Day of Atonement in the Old Testament. The Day of Atonement. Listen, church. The holiness of God cannot and does not ignore or condone sin. Grace does not mean God ignores your sin. Grace does not mean God condones your sin. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Please listen to me. Because there is a kind of teaching that has swept through the church that has given a warped understanding of the message of grace. And I want you to understand today, grace does not condone sin and grace does not ignore sin. But grace provides a way out. All right, listen. The holiness of God cannot and does not ignore or condone sin. Sin has to be dealt with because God is a God of justice. If God ignores sin, if God condones sin, without a price being paid, then he's unjust. Because of the justice of God, he cannot do it. In his mercy and love toward man, he has provided a way out for us. Remember, 
The blood is the only answer for sin. The blood is the only answer for sin. Any sin requires blood to be forgiven. Any sin. Now go to Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 please. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. And the latter part of the verse reads like this. Without shedding of blood is no remission. That means sin, if, ha if it has to be forgiven, sin, if it has to be wiped out, requires blood. All right. Forgiveness, therefore, is, of sin is not cheap. It always costs a life for blood to be shed. It always costs a life for blood to be shed. Under the old covenant, or under the law of Moses, God in his mercy toward people provided a day called a day of atonement for atoning the sins of the people of God. The word atonement means to cover. Atone means what? Everybody. What does it mean? Say it again. Say it again. It's important for you to understand because atonement is not what happens to us under the new covenant. Atonement happened in the old covenant, but atonement does not happen in the new covenant. All right. I said atonement means what? Cover. Two great things or remarkable things happen on the day of atonement. Two great remarkable things happen. What happened on the day of atonement? To really understand it, in the light of the New Testament, because everything in the Old Testament is a shadow of things to come, right? Come on, say amen if you believe that. It's a shadow of things to come. So to get a good understanding of what atonement was and what happened and how it applies to us today, we're going to come back on Good Friday. All right, what happened? And we're going to look at that. I'm going to take you on. But this teaching on the blood is not going to end after Easter. It's going to carry on, okay? Because it's got nothing to do with, I thought it's a good time to start, but I'm not going to finish it. I'm going to take you further on because we need to understand the value involved in the blood of the Lamb and what God has given us. I want you to know, friend, the blood of Jesus is a weapon of warfare. The blood of Jesus is a shield of protection. The blood of Jesus is our security. The blood, let me tell you, let me tell you, the blood is the last card that God has against the enemy. After the blood, God has got nothing else left. The last card that God has is the blood. And after the blood, there is nothing else that God has got. Every time Moses went and stood before Pharaoh, he said, let my people go. And he did a miracle. The magicians did, did the same thing. They had a counterfeit production of the same kind of miracle. Until the last one. When blood was shed. And then Pharaoh now. Until now, Moses when said, let my people go. When blood was shed, Pharaoh said, please go, get out. The devil cannot handle the blood of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Put your hands together. Give God some praise. Come on, clap your hands and give God some praise. The blood of Jesus is too powerful for the enemy to handle. He cannot handle. He does not have an answer. 
And when you apply the blood and know how to use it as an instrument of war, as a shield of protection, and call upon and plead for your security and for the cleansing of your sins so you have a right to enter into the presence of God, let me tell you there is no force in heaven, no force in hell, no force on earth or under the earth can that can stop you from going forward and fulfilling your destiny in God. Somebody shout hallelujah. This is your day of deliverance. He said, turn to your stronghold. For today, I will give you double is what God said. I don't know how many of you are ready for the double today. I don't know how many of you are double for, the t- t- double for today. The double blessing, come on, double blessing. Because of the blood. You're coming under the covering of the blood of Jesus. And the blood is about to produce for you. It is the blood covenant. It, the covenant of the blood set them free from the pit of no water are you stuck somewhere have you been stuck for a long time have you been troubled and are you in trouble and you're not able to get out of it you don't know what to do you are stuck and God says hey take refuge in the blood the blood thy blood covenant has set them free from the pit of no water Your deliverance is not you. This is the day of deliverance. And this is the day of your double blessing. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Thank you for joining our online community. For weekly updates, make sure you subscribe to our channel and also click the bell button for further notifications.